Now we are going to start by the deteriorating health of our leader, Mazim Nandi Okukano. Before now, we know that the present IPOB led council, I did not mean Mazim Nandi Kano's uh, lead council, no, but the IPOB lead council who were also the then uh, Mazen and the Colonel's lead council for the past three years, they have been lamenting and telling, updating their friends about the deteriorating health of uh, our great leader, Mazi and the Okukano. I remembered uh, Mazi, I remembered Barrister Ejofo always lamenting how Mazin and the Colonel was getting short of breath. How, how many times he fainted, how he was uh, diagnosed of a uh, hypoclamia that always uh, affect the function of the heart. But the surprising thing there is that whenever he made this update or post or report, it would be so surprising that a colleague, a colleague in, in the legal team and the siblings of Mazi and the Kano will come openly and counter that report that Mazi and the Kano was okay, that there was nothing wrong with Mazi and the Kano. And this has been happening for the past three years. So now what just happened that everything has changed? And not just that, we, we, we remember that since uh, the present uh, legal team took uh, over the, the legal case of Mazi Nandekano. We, we know that they have not been updating Biafrans and they have not been reporting anything about the health conditions of our leader, Mazi Nandekano. But just uh, uh, two days before that we were astonished to see a post on X coming from this same legal uh, lead council who has refused or who has been not updating their friends about the health conditions of Mazin Nandekano coming up with this very post. I want to read that post. And this post says, Yesterday, during our visitation with Mazi Nandekano, we found him ill with shortness of breath, low BP, and general malaise. For this reason, he requested to see his doctor, and we submitted a letter in this regard. Today, the doctor arrived, the DSS, but was denied access to Mazi Nandekano. And, and, and the, the, the touching thing there is that he concluded that post with crying emoji. So Mazi Lyoma, what changed? Is it now that this very lead council is come, is it just coming to their know that Mazi Nandekano has been diagnosed with a uh, hypoclamia or that he has been having this uh, shortening of breath and other sicknesses that has been or uh, that has contributed to the deteriorating health of Mazen Nandik and what suddenly changed Mazen Lion Man. Yeah Mother um thank you very much for this very question. Um I'm going to answer you and the, the rest of the world uh with the little I can explain concern what is playing on ground about uh, Onyendu, the leader of indigenous people of Biafra, IPOB. You, we all recall that, uh, like you said, uh, previous uh, lead council, 
in the name of uh, Mazi Ifanye Jofo, the barrister Ifanye Jofo, who do make this post whenever he visited uh, our leader to notify the public, to notify the Biafrans worldwide, because the man inside the DSS dungeon is not a private man, is not a man of family, but it is a leader of over 80 something million population, as I may, as I may say. You see what played concerning the present lead council. The game they played against the previous ones is funny. Why I say this funny is this. This is the same notification that was coming from Barrister Ifanye Jofo. In other way, because if uh, Barrister Ifanye Jofo understands the who Onyendu is, and the, the Onyendu is a public uh, 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 um, father, let me just put it that way, is a public father, that we need to trade with care. Whoever that is handling him must notify the public where he belongs. Then the Ines of Onyendu being recently reviewed to the public, the same thing that was carried out by uh, former uh, lead council of Onyendu, which is still the lead council of IPOB today. It is funny. When someone that belongs to such field come up openly to counter the post being made by his fellow uh, colleague, I don't know, I cannot explain deeper the reason behind all these things. But if I may tell you, if I may tell you with common sense, that what was playing out there was just to take away the capable hands of Onyendu. Uh, that one parable I want to say, he said uh, that there's one parable we do make in our place. He said, when a woman want to, when a bad woman want to destroy a man, he will first of all separate that man from his family. Separate that man from his trusted friends, then the woman now will not have chance to strike the man because without separating them, without separating that man from those people, from family, from trusted friend, that man brain will be intact. The man reasoning will be intact because those ones that know his character, that know him very well, will be asking him now, nah, you change, you have changed. Then the man will come back to his senses. So what uh, what uh, the present uh, lead council did was try to push away the capable hand of Onyendu because there is a mission. That's what I can explain here. There is a mission handed over to them. But he had beginning to understand the the, the gravity of that particular mission, if he carry it successfully. That this mission is not a mission, is not what he thought. When he was aside, he think he can play the game that the, these politicians handed over to him. But when he have come inside, even those that sent him now have realized that, no, this man is not a man to play this kind of game against, because it will cause serious havoc. So what they are doing now, they are slowing. So they are slowing, trying to know what IPOB will do. But I pray to God, nothing happened to him. But if anything happens to him, uh, those who want uh, the consequences to, to fall on them, they should get prepared. That is the only thing I can say. I can't say more than this. They should get prepared because this is not the time to joke. We are talking about a man that over 80 million people have loved. And uh, this man is innocent. And they have continued to detain him, even with his illness, they continue to detain him. 
Well, I maybe I, that is a, maybe they have already prepared anyway. So we are waiting. Thank you. Thank you, Mazi. Mazi Austin, are you there with us? All right. So, Mazi, I may want to or like to further ask someone that is sick to that extent that he's getting shortness of breath and he faints. And this same person is being denied access to his medical doctors and medical treatments. Mazi, what do you think that Nigerian DSS really wanted from Mazen and the Kano? Well, uh, their mission earlier, uh, immediately he was a uh, extraordinary reduction. We all, we all can remember their original mission. The original mission was to take his life away. But uh, with this condition presently, that this is situation of uh, health have worsened, and they continue doing what they are doing. You know, one thing about Nigeria, Nigeria government is only government around the globe that I can tell you boldly that uh, I have never seen Nigeria government engage in peace. Nigeria government is government that, in, uh, let me say, in, uh, around the world, they love violence because foreign powers who is advising them, advising them so that there will be always crisis within that territory so that they will be benefiting. You can see Nuhu Rubadu, the recent video that was that surfaced on air, where begging the white man can then stop the banditry, stop the terrorism in the north. He's begging them, he's begging the white man. The white man video is there. So that's to tell you that there are some Westerners who is behind every Nigerian politician not to do the right thing. But if I were them, they know that this man is innocent. It is time to release this man and allow this man to go. I don't know why Nigeria officials always take advice from Britain, take advice from France. And these are the two major countries in Europe that doesn't want Africa to survive. So when you are, when those who are benefiting from you illegally is advising you, they will be advising you based on the interests of their own side. So they look at Mazen Nandikano as a threat to what they are benefiting from. So they will always be there to tell them, don't mind the pressure, don't mind the pressure, don't mind the pressure. But at the end of the day, what we be, we be. Somebody may ask, what is that that is going to be? What is going to be is the total freedom of Biafra. If I were Igbo politicians, they will be serious and they bring that man out safely for their own benefit. Let me just drop it that way. For their own benefit. Somebody may say, what is their own benefit? Because we want to live in our society with the spirit of love, harmony, togetherness. And they should understand that if anything happened to this man, that the youth of Biafra globally will not take it easy with them. And they will not have anywhere to run to. Nowhere like nowhere, nowhere is greater than home. They should think this direction and do the right thing. Thank you. Thank you for your submissions. Mazi Chika Austin is with us, but um no uh, he will be with us on audio. We will listen and we will hear him. Very well. Mazi Chika Austin, are you there with us? Yes, I'm here live and direct. I'm here. Sorry for the delay. I was struggling with the internet connection before I did a swap, so I was able to be here. So I'm here live and direct. Uh, Mazi, uh, long man, I want to thank you because I've been extensively listening to you. Uh, you made a very wonderful submission. And the one other, and of course, uh, I cannot... Uh, to thank uh, 
our technical director who is on the background but doing a lot with his magic finger. Maz, I want to thank you uh, for your contribution, who is in amazingly for for us. Oh, so I'm here, Maz, well, I'm here, and I'm good to go. All right. Uh, my next question, my next question goes to you. You can see this um, present lead council who has been trying to play the game that they know how to play best. As the same colleague who, after the court judgment or after the previous uh, need council, have succeeded in defeating, uh, 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 making Madeline the kind of to defeat Nigerian government and DSS in their own court of law. And the judgment says that he cannot be tried in any other law court in Nigeria. And the court verdict says that he is discharged and acquitted on October 2023. Now, this present lead counsel went ahead to file the application for release on bail. And as we know that in the month of uh, March, that uh, application was dismissed. And he now turned 60 degrees, asking for the unconditional release of Mazen Nandekan, which has been the stand of the previous uh, lead council, the stand of the IPOB leadership, the stand of Ndibo in general, and the stand of IPOB. But so what happened that he could not proceed to uh, for Nigerian government or the, 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 the Nigerian court to release Mazen Nandekano on bail? Why is he now asking for the same thing and going the exact process or, or procedure that has been laid down by the previous lead council? Uh, well, uh, well I, I want to say thank you once again. Uh, you know, um, I will discuss, I will respond to the question based on areas I have extensively researched on and the areas I have you know, dedicated my time on, which has to do with statecraft, how states behave. When I talk about state here, I'm, I'm talking about countries. I'm not talking about the sub-regions. So I will respond to my years of understanding state behavior, how states behave. You know, we are, we are, we are, it's it, it just that uh, we came off and started talking about Biafra, you know, Mazenam, they can waking up or awakening us into the quest for freedom uh, without us being properly schooled on statecraft or how states behave. I want to tell you this, and it's important every one of us should take it to heart. Countries have a zero emotions. Countries have a zero illusions. Countries face objectivity, they face realism. They have no ground for sentiment. And if we understand that, which unfortunately we have not really digested that fact. But if we understand this fact that countries objectively pursue whatever she wants to pursue, and getting every instrument at her disposal to achieve that goal. If we, if that digests in our consciousness and subconsciousness, we will now understand what is actually playing in the case of Mazen Nandekan. The case of Mazen Nandekan is purely state onslaught on any mechanism that we have Mazen and they can defeat the Nigerian state. I repeat, what is playing out in the case of Mazen and they can 
is a conscious state move. When I talk about state, I repeat, I'm talking about country. Trying to remove any bottleneck, any impediment. Now we make Mazinam Lekano to emerge as Nelson Mandela of West Africa. And how will state do that? State cannot contract an Aosaman to do that for them. They cannot contract a Fulani to do that. They have to also look inwardly within the circle of the people and the contract individual or individuals to do that. What a law is doing is a pure dirty game. It might not really be a good one for somebody to, to you know, uh, it might not really, my, my choice of words or diction might not really be a smooth one to some portals. But the truth behave, remains that if you take chronological analysis, if you take a careful understanding of what Marissa Loy has been doing in this case, you don't need Prophet Elijah to wake up from the dead, the land of the dead, and say to you, this is what is happening. Let me say something, or let me point out some reference. You know, sometimes we are not comfortable to certain facts or certain truths. But the truth remains that the truth you are trying to shy away from hearing today, you will definitely hear it tomorrow or next tomorrow. And it might be so damaging because then you don't have opportunity to take advantage of the available truth. What am I trying to say? I started raising it as a concern that every effort these guys are doing is to reduce Mazen Namdekano from a national aspect to an individual. And people thought some of us who are saying this, we are just acting stupidly. You are dealing with a state, or should I say space, because Nigeria is not the only state out there within the gallery. But you are dealing with an entities that even though they don't have best advisors within their territorial integrity, they can go to any part of the world and shop for it. Because our problem has been this mentality of undermining the efficacy of our openness. You cannot do that. Do that, definitely, it is at your own detriment. But it's time it took time to blackmail every active legal representative to Mazen Namdekano. Every single one that has gotten Mazen Namdekano a winning. He took time to make sure he destroyed the legal front. Just like some persons were also contracted to, to attack the leadership front, to attack the media front, to attack the security front. All these guys, we are all contracted to do this dirty job. To you, you might start shouting, eh, why we need that? Uh, why will somebody identify to live against his own people? That is your own, if you, if you argue on that, that is your own business. Countries, countries and those they contract don't think the way you think. They see it as a deal that must be delivered. The question you should ask yourself today is this. And the same alloy, after the former legal representative strongly stood on the ground that they have defeated the Nigerian state, if there is anything that must be done, is a political process and they must be activated. And Barista Alloy and the group mocked that position. And say, forget them, they are talking nicely. Let us fight for expedient hearing. The same expedient hearing turned out to, to, you know, telling the judge that the judge should, should invoke a section of the law that guarantees the parties to engage in dialogue. No longer expedient hearing. And people now move their synergy towards political solution a few weeks ago. That noise was made. And today, what we are hearing is that he was not allowed access. Mazen Namdekano was not allowed to see the doctor. Are you not telling me that there is a political process or dialogue and such level of handedness is method on somebody who is negotiating? It has never happened in the world. He quoted Madiba, which is Mandela, and I wrote something telling him that 
you are giving a wrong narrative. Some persons we are not comfortable with that. Some people are even saying you cannot negotiate with somebody that we, that is in turn. You know, there was this no trust and all this. But I let people to understand. In as much as a certain nobody is trying to, a certain nobody is telling you the truth. The truth remains that it is by the star law that is pushing for the states to consider the issue of dialogue. And when you send some signal to the state, to the state that committed an international crime, the state will not see you as somebody they are going to dialogue. But when you talk about dialogue, there's a level of equilibrium amongst the parties. The state will reduce you as someone who is begging for to be freed. And in so doing, we start telling you, can you consider amnesty? Or state pardon, which invariably means you have committed a crime against the state. So, Barista Loy has found himself in a water loop. He doesn't know what let the truth be said, he doesn't know whether to go left or right. What he's not trying to tell you is to build a sentiment. Imagine them, they can't have fainted three times, four times. I'm not saying there's no truth on that. But because he, he, he has legally found himself in a point of no return, he's not struggling on what to do. So what am I trying to say? First of all, people, we must tell ourselves the truth. And what is the truth? We are fighting a very delicate battle. For those of you who think it's a, it's a game of make noise and go, no, 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 no. It's not if you make noise. You won't be Expedient in your calculation. You must be strategic in every move you're making. Because we thought it was noise making. And before we realized, they have inf they, they infiltrated every department of the struggle. Thank you, thank you to the noblemen in the Directorate of State. If not, the struggle would have packed. Because the period we're supposed to keep critical surveillance, deep articulative move or articulatory moves, we are busy thinking is a noise making. And what do you have today? They attack the media, thank God for those who we stood. They attack the security unit, thank God for those who we stood. They, 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 they attack the legal department. And people think, these guys who are doing all these things are playing. It's only you that is playing. You that is undermining. I remember they also, they also attack the, the, the financial aspect of this very movement. There is, there is no sector of this movement that has not been attacked. So if you look at, if anybody tells you a lawyer, what a lawyer is trying to do, let me tell you, 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 I, 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 some persons might say, oh, you, you are saying a lot on this platform, but like, that is true. I have to say it. Let me tell you, uh, Wada, there's what we call stormation or stormate, stormate. When, when after this program, take time to go and research it. A country can put into stormate. In Igbo language, it means Ghani Hwadema, Ghana, so Ghana will click for years, for centuries. It's a strategy. Countries apply, deploy that strategy. Alloy is moving the struggle into stomach. We will keep on discussing one topic. The case will come. Sometimes they give you hope of dialogue. Next time he tells you that uh, uh, is mastered, all those things are keeping us mentally busy chasing illusion against the real deal. That is what I have to say. Mazi, you've made a very awesome submission. And I say thank you to you. And I see how to, you, you've touched um, this question that uh, I wanted to ask, but let me ask it in this manner, that uh, this uh, present uh, late council, 
knew quite well that for over years now that uh, Mazin Nandekano has been uh, diagnosed to be susceptible to uh, potassium deficiency, which affects the function of heart. And this man who claimed to be the lead counsel with the, with, the, with the siblings of the leader of the indigenous people of Biafra and all the high-handedness by the Nigerian DSS still have the mind to keep it away from Biafrans. And now he has come to cry that Onyendu is fainting. Is this man or are these uh, men that like playing to the gallery? Do you think that they are just coming to provoke Biafras or to provoke the leadership despite having done everything possible to separate Mazin Nandekano from IPOB leadership and IPOB? How all of a sudden, over the years, you knew that this man well, was sick, and you just came out now to start crying. Well, uh, I first, first of all, let's look at something. Let's look at the anthill of lie that uh, Barrister Loy and his uh, handlers pushed for us. You know, it's not up to just barely some weeks. Barrister Loy uh, twe uh, tweeted, he used his S account and said, what is on the table now is for Mazenam the Kano to be free. That any other thing will be when he's released. I don't know if, you, if any of us here got or came across oh, yeah. that. Now, let me tell you something. Mazen Namdekano is not the only freedom fighter or political prisoner that was held and the uh, negotiation process activated. Listen and listen very carefully. Julian Assange, who happens to be the founder of uh, WikiLeaks, was held by British British government and the US in UK. Do you know immediately the process of dialogue with Julian Assange began between him and the US? The ill treatment against him stopped. The way he was being treated in detention was reviewed. Why? You must treat someone you are planning or you have begun negotiation or dialogue with. You must treat the person fairly. If there is dialogue process. I don't even understand me. So if Barrister Law uses S account to tell us that there is ongoing dialogue, the same person is not telling us that Mazin Namdekano, who is undergoing dialogue with those who kidnapped him, is now fainting. That means there is no dialogue. The very moment, the very day you start dialoguing with your opponent, you become conscious from certain things are being waived as a precondition for dialoguing. Let me give you another instance. When Joe Biden came into the office of U.S. as a president, he decided to engage Iran on dialogue. Iran gave them a precondition. Precondition is a condition you must meet before dialogue starts. And the point is this, 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 this. Do this, then we know how serious you are. So is Allah telling us that Muslim Namdekano is undergoing dialogue 
with Nigeria, and yet the DSS are still using the same hand they are treating him, even at this moment he's dialoguing. You, ca you can tell a fool that. You can't tell me, Tika Austin. Nobody can tell me that nonsense. Because it doesn't who any water there. I pointed Julian Assange that immediately U.S. began. I'm talking about recent events. Julian Assange happened less than three weeks now. If I'm not mistaken. Immediately the process of dialogue was activated. Julian Assange started enjoying some certain privileges. That is how it is. You cannot rule it out. So you cannot tell me that there is ongoing dialogue and you are still subjecting the person you are engaging into extrajudicial treatments. That is nonsense. That is pure nonsense. You can't tell me that. So what am I trying to say? Somebody is busy. Either Barrister Law is confused or is consciously playing the game he's playing at the detriment of the interests of the Biafran people. Thank you. Thank you once again. Master Lion Man, despite the ill treatment given to Mazi Nandekano by the Nigerian state and DSS. Do you think that if there is any dialogue going on, do you think that IPOB should not be involved in that dialogue? And who and who are representing IPOB or Biafrance in this dialogue? Is dialogue done just only? by one man because i remembered abori accord of 19 january 1967 where it was scheduled where they met who and who we are involved even the national confab of 2014 that was initiated by good lord uh, jonathan administration we saw how it went we knew the people that are represented in that uh, 2014 confab. So, if really there is a negotiation going on, as say uh, this command is portraying to those he think he can deceive, do you think that it is Nigerian government with will be dialoguing with Mazen Nandekan only? Yeah, one other, I must respond this way. Like uh, Maze T. Austin have said, there's something he said there. If dialogue is being initiated, there is something they call precondition, which whoever that is uh, uh, affected, we began to enjoy. And there's something that the 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 the, the, the people who, holding that person will remove in order way to show the sign of they are ready for peace. Like I do said, I said it before, let me repeat it again. With the situation we are seeing today, over Mazen and the Kano, by the same present uh, legal team. It shows that there is no dialogue ongoing anywhere. Like what Mas J. Cost instead is what they are playing. I said it earlier. I said it earlier before this uh, this uh, reviewed. I said there is no dialogue going on. Even the 50 lawmakers, uh, lawmakers in Nigeria that have volunteered to make that move, the same man who is giving you reports of Mazen Nandekanu being denied access to his doctor, then went against those people. Because when those people 
look at them and say, okay, let us add our own effort. So when the, the move they made will, will be a very fruitful move. The same man went against it secretly. So you see, the what they are playing IPOB is what we have understand. That's why I urge every other Biafrans, especially those who speak on media, to be mindful of what they said outside there, and uh, they should stop being emotional. They should stop being emotional because what Nigeria State are playing to IPOB is a mind game. If you are not a critical thinker, you can never catch up the game they are putting in place. And immediately the they want to dish out this game. They will deploy people to go to start inboxing all these our media personnel to test the how brain, how reasonable they are. But those people, they never knew that they are still testing them. They are still examining them. But that is kind of word you will bring to me. If I read it finish and I study it finish, then I make my internal analysis. I will, I will just laugh over it. I will say, no, I will not, I will not talk about this because it's not necessary. Dialogue, dialogue, we are hearing dialogue here. Dialogue. There is no dialogue going on. The only dialogue that wanted to happen was that dialogue lead by the 50 lawmakers. And they have, I'm going to tell you today, they have stopped them. They have stopped them. But they will not come out of media to tell you they have stopped them. Because that is the, that shows, because those people, they thought that people who wanted Martin Nadekano out, sincerely wanted him out. But those people now, now understand that it was, oh, it's a game. Okay, okay. They relax. Because this is government where they are benefiting from. So there must be a limit of their of their uh, 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 persistent to uh, over the over uh, such issue, and which they have received the intel, and they have received the may I call it cause, and uh, they have relaxed. What must what uh, uh, the present legal team lead by? Uh, Edmarco, what they are doing is to bring IPOB down. The target, I said it with here, I think last two weeks, I said, the target is very simple. We must destroy IPOB. But there's one thing he, he is not remembering. That's my area of concern. Are you trying to destroy IPOB? IPOB is Mazen Nandekan. Mazen Nandekan is IPOB. He has forgot this thing. So trying to destroy IPOB simply means systematically trying to destroy Mazen and the Khan. But I don't know if he is reasoning towards that direction. So maybe if you come across today's broadcast on the BTV, maybe this broadcast will help him to recall back his brain. Because the mission they handed over to him and he agreed to carry it out destroy IPOB, we will release Mazen Nandekan. And that IPOB, he has never succeeded in destroying it. Rather, he has made IPOB more stronger. So is it not the time he understand that, no, what I am doing, trying to destroy IPOB, is exactly what is holding this man there. Until he understand this simple fact and they remove his hand, because a man they contracted Against, against against a foundation and the leader of the foundation is the man is, is the same person that this person the same man they contracted is represented uh one that may tell you that is a difficult matter if at all there will be any release they can never the same people can never release Mazen and the Kano under the under the care or under the caretaker of such person. I don't want to, let me not stop mentioning that name here. I don't, they will not release Mazen and the Kano under his caretaker, never. And, and Mazen, do you think that, do you think that reducing 
an international case and to an a national case to just one man versus Nigerian state. Do you think that that can make them to release Mazin and the Kano? No, that is the area they are going to entangle him more. That is the area they are going to detain him more. Do you understand me? That is what I'm telling you. That's the game he is playing. But many people don't understand. He tried to remove him from public figure, to bring him to family, to reduce him to family figure. That is what he has been trying to do. But he is not finding it easy. It is IPOB. Whenever they, they have tried it, they have already succeeded in bringing him to that level. But IPOB carry him back to that level. So this is where they are finding it difficult. This is where they are finding it difficult. If when they have do, done that, IPOB remove their hands from Mazen Nandekan, Mazen Nandekan will be nobody today. And uh, they will have access to him to do him whatever they want to do, do to him. Thank you so much. Master Chica Austin, the, I don't know if it is laid in your mind the type of picture that these siblings and the present elite council are painting. Do you think that what they're trying to paint to the international community and to IPOB and Mazen and the because these people are agendists. Do you think that they want to make the picture to look like IPOB has abandoned Mazen and the Kano? And to Mazen and the Kano, they will paint the picture to him that look, IPOB has rejected you. They are no longer talking about you. They have moved on. They no longer care about you. Why they try to put it to their friend to see it that, oh, Mazen and the piano has compromised. Do you think that this is one of the agendas of these agentists? Okay, well, I thank you. Well, uh, there is reason... There is a strong reason why I like bringing in references when I speak, because it is important to understand that uh, whatever you're seeing today has once in life happened. That also not exclusive to the case of Biafra, the case of Mazen Mandela. It has happened elsewhere. It has happened all over the world. The problem we keep on having as a people is that we want to handle issues without also asking questions. When this thing happened in social area, what happened? It might not really be an absolute usage of same method because environment differs. But you can look at it and say, oh, these are this thing that happened here was somehow similar to what is happening here. We, this thing that happened in the same continent was also similar, or is also similar with what is happening here. Then you can now make what we call comparative analysis. From your comparing, making analysis by compar uh, comparing, you can now know a better formula to solve your problem. Let me tell you, no country in this world, I'm going to repeat this, this statement I want to make three times so that I can seek in us. No country in this world fears an individual. No country in this world fears an individual. I repeat again, no country in this world fears an individual. What countries fear is the movement, the individualist. And when they target the individual, they target the individual in order to destroy the movement, not even to destroy the individual, because they know that the power of, the, of an individual or the individual fellow lies on the multitude he commands. Now, let me give you three recent instances so you understand for better 
portraying of what I'm saying. You know, Donald Trump, the government of U.S. is not afraid of Donald Trump. The government of U.S. is only afraid of MAGA movement. You know MAGA, move, MAGA movement, Make American Great Movement, where you have millions of subscribers, where you have millions of followers. It is that movement that the government of U.S. wants to disband, wants to pro proscribe, if possible, not to Donald Trump. And any day Donald Trump as an individual detaches himself away from that murder, the government of the U.S. will get rid of him overnight, less than 24 hours. Because he's nobody. But the mega movement is what the U.S. government is having sleepless night over. That is what the deep state is worried of. Not Donald Trump. Or the Trump family name. Nobody is scared of any family name. If you if you say it is right, immediately the Nigerian government, the military government of Nigeria, made a role to to act, a make, you know, make a costly mistake by provoking the Christians. You remember the story; it might be true or not. Where he sunk. Bibles in the Atlantic Ocean, and the state where he made he can he can do without evil. And one of them was provoked, and the minute of one of them made that statement or acted those costly moves, the level of his support in certain quarters depreciated. In fact, it's all out. The Easterners withdrew their support. The Christians withdrew their support on Awolo, and Awolo became vulnerable. The almighty name Awolo was, was finished overnight. Most of us might not have been an adult during Awolo era, but Awolo, the name, sorry, not Awolo, the name Abiola, sorry, the name Abiola was so strong a name. But immediately they pushed him into making some certain costly acts and ways. Like the story that Abiola sunk Bible in the Atlantic. The story that he said he can do without evil. He began to lose so he began to lose his support base. And then the government, you know, there's something we don't understand. Every day there's what we call security briefing. All over the country, it happens like that all over the world. All right, as okay, I think he's back. Okay, I said there's something that is called security briefing every day. A, a sitting president is being informed about how popular or powerful an individual is. The secret service will go and tell him, you see, you see this man, his support base is dwindling. It's fading away. You see, you see this man, his support base is still intact. You see this one? These are part of the brief that is being done on a daily basis. So, Abiola, for instance, this is your reference uh, purpose. I'm not digressing. Abiola was long into making that mistake, and he thought his leg, his family name Abiola, will save him. They finished him overnight. You see, we are talking about history. History is devoid of sentiment. When, when you discuss history, you, you face facts. Not talking so that somebody will be comfortable. I want to see so that somebody will, 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 will someone say, Illusion should be pampered. That is nonsense. And when they succeeded in making a, a viola into that mess, they destroyed him overnight. And they, today, a viola is gone and gone. Donald Trump was targeted not because of him as an individual, not because of Trump family. Trump family can be crushed overnight. It's because of the murder movement. 
you may answer, you also want to do not know. Do you know that US reached a compromise with Julian Assange? Do you know what, the, one of the key, the most demand the United States told Julian Assange? What do you know? Yeah. US, US government told Julian Assange to disband WikiLeaks. That is the first condition. They say, you see this movement that makes you great, disband it. And the man said, I can compromise in other conditions, but for me to disperse the movement with killings, I will not do it. In the case of Mazen Nam Dekano, look at what is going on. These contracted infiltrators are being hired to provoke IPOB leadership so that IPOB leadership will not abandon Mazen Nam Dekano. Then they go to Mazen Nam Dekano, they say, These people are no longer talking about your region. You have forgotten, they have recycled it, recycled you. So that Mazen Namdekan, when he comes out or, or he comes appears in court, he will start attacking the leadership. Start telling them I'm disappointed in you people. Then this was the leadership will act of provocation and say, okay, do your thing. And government is every day studying. There is a chart where they know the status of relationship between IPOB and Mazen Namdekan. They are studying the chat on daily basis. When it's obvious to them that he has gone beyond the bar, they said, even though we destroy him today, nobody will, nobody will react. But these people have abandoned him. Courtesy of the, the actions his siblings and the barrister law is taking. So if you think they are doing that unknowingly or out of carelessness, you are naive. And in other way around, there's also a conspiracy of let us provoke the leadership so that the leadership will abandon Mazen and the Canon. The Mazen and the Canon can say, okay, now Islam government, bring anything you want on the table, I will sign it. Hence, this will have abandoned me. Then when he comes out tomorrow, his brothers will say, hey, he, 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 he abandoned the project because we disappointed him first. But without looking at the processes that were instigated to make sure the relationship between the leadership and the leader is destroyed. What we are talking here, of course, is not an issue that uh, you should expect most of us to understand. Some people are mentally downgraded to understand what we are talking about. All they, all, all they, all they get you know, happy with is when People start talking stupid things that are irrelevant. Of course, it makes people like us to be sick. Because we are talking of a hybrid mental manipulation. And other people are busy talking rubbish. Thinking that is when you make noise, you get results. As they from there, shouting water, 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 water. Where are they today? Most of them have realized they were sick. Because this is the issue of strategic planning. Not the issue of you come, you talk nonsense, you open your mouth and talk like a fool without any constructive engagement. So that is what is going on. The reason why we must discuss these issues is because they, as we are speaking, the state and their agents are working this platform. They want to know how intelligent you are, how, how knowledgeable you are. Are you aware of what is happening? As they finish listening to this program, they have to go to their drawing board and review and say, you see, these people seem to be on the know. And when we come and start talking, wah, 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 wah. like in the era, they go and say, don't mind them. They're very, very unserious and not strategic. What disturbs a state actor is how strategic you are, not how multi you are. And I think I can allow Mazi to speak. Mazi, do you have something to add? Yes, I have a little bit uh, something to add on what uh, Mazi Chika have already uh, released here. You see, this is what I always said uh, concerning uh, Biafrance. Sometimes I used to make a post of people should know that IPOB movement is stage by stage, level by level. 
the stage we are now is not the stage to go on media or come, you know, start making noise, talking out of point. Because they are watching you. The people who are staging these games are watching you. Depending how you understand it, we make it more difficult for them to accomplish their game. If you understand them, they will abandon that particular game and another method of game will, dish out, will be dish out for them to play because they have played so many games. So this is another game now they are playing and they are playing it with what? Somebody who have claimed that he will release Mazen and the Kano. This is the where Biafra should be very, very careful. I have already told Biafra on my live broadcast, I've told them that this man you are saying he would, he can, go, so Biafra should write this somewhere. He can never, he don't have the capacity. And they don't have the temperament, they don't they lack the, the jurisdiction to carry to achieve what he wants to achieve. Already, we should also know that this man has discharged and acquitted. The case has been won by the IPUOB uh, Lego team. So, what he's trying to play is the game handed over to him. Many people are not understanding this angle. We are not thinking towards this angle. It is on the game. And then now that we have known that he is on the game, the only thing we have to do is to watch him, monitor him. Now that he understands that the people already know that he is playing the game, I think uh, now he will not find it more easier. But when all of us keep on fooling ourselves, I say, okay, let us wait for him now. He said uh, his, his dialogue. He said is this... The, he, that is not his that is not his aim his aim is to separate this man pressurize this man frustrate the man for the man to deny what is sustaining him because ipob is what is keeping Mazen and the Kano today then sorry there is a question you ask about if there is any discussion or any negotiation going on are they going to discuss it with Mazin and the Canon that that's already in detention or the IPOB leadership? This is the area the Afrans should be asking. You say that is initiative of uh, in, uh, initiative of uh, dialogue or negotiation. Who are you negotiating with? I have asked this question before because in 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 a law, you don't negotiate with the man. On that chair, you negotiate with the family of the man that is on that chair. Then now, when they come to stage to bring that man to join the family to negotiate, he must lose that chair first, because it is a highly embarrassing and uh, may I call it uh, unprofessional to hand to come with a man on that chair in discussion. No. It doesn't it doesn't happen anywhere in the world so if there is any dialogue going on leadership could have told that to to be our friends oh we have engaged they have called us and we have given them condition where we will meet because they may not meet in nigeria it is only when they are ready for dialogue we will see the sign the leadership will receive the 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 notification okay where do you want us to meet to discuss about peace or about whatever we want to discuss? They will say, okay, let us meet in one African country or let us meet in a, a one American uh, in one American continent country. Let us meet in Europe or let us meet in Asia. It depends on where the leadership we choose. Then they will come there and the negotiation will start. Mazen and Canada have nothing to discuss with them. It is the IPOP leadership that will discuss everything discussable, then and hand over the message to Mazen and the Canon. Look at the level of discussion we have gotten here. Are you okay with this? Then he will reply to them, yes or no. If it is not okay with him, 
they will go back to the table again. Discussion continue. Thank you. Thank you, Mazi. I hope um, dear friends are listening and those who cherish the words of wisdom will be learning. Because sometimes I used to be surprised at what some people who suppose or who call themselves freedom fighters who has been speaking on social media, the madness that they've involved themselves into and they have clothed themselves with garments of licentious behavior that made everybody to see them as just uh, content creators. Someone, you know, our people will say, no 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 yana aboko anarachi, okay? Again, it is only a madman that can build a house, go out, look at the house, come back to destroy it. It can only be done by a madman. If these unruly people who have chosen to become insubordinate to the highest body of this movement, if they can learn from the ways of wise men in the studio like you today, I believe they will adjust themselves and they do better they are doing today. Because when you look at the behavior of these people, you will just conclude that these men have been bought over. That is why they want to tear down the leadership. They, they, they are now in the forefront championing it. That what has IPOB done to bring Mazen and the Kano out? What, has, uh, what are they doing? What this, what that? When they themselves have been destroying all the efforts made by this very leadership. And, and someone, I had someone who said that these people that are continually asking these questions, what has the leadership done? What is what? He said that Merok set himself ablaze for the sake of Biafra freedom. You yourself that is trying to bring down this uh, 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 highest body of this movement, you that try to destroy it, you that try to tell the world that Mazen Nandikan has abandoned the struggle, the leadership is this, the leadership, you as an individual, what is your own contribution? Apart from sitting down with your camera just on the ring light and begin to play voices begin to i mean men these men they are not even ashamed of what they say and what they do as men and you begin to wonder are these men are these people are they really men are they for this struggle at all because there is something that when someone is doing you know that is sitting at the back we conclude that i am not on the same rail with this very person. And I believe that such persons are learning. Why that is by the way, and that takes us to Kenya. Mazi Austin, I hope you are still listening. Mazi Austin, are you out or are you there? All right, thank you so much for being there. Now for weeks now, we saw how much a, uh, Protest has been rocking the country, Kenya. And in Nairobi, we saw how the protesters have succeeded in breaking into the parliament, destroying uh, government uh, properties. And we saw the revenge or the retaliation of the police firing tear gas, shooting uh, rubber arms and other firearms. And uh, not just that they were doing that, but they were bundling protesters, they were beating them, they were taking them to unknown places, detaining them, asking them who was funding and who was uh, planning or who planned or who initiated the, the, the protest. We see, you know, what 
how these people are coming against the, the, the protesters, uh, 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 what they are doing to them. And Mazi Austin, can you liken this protest going on in protest uh, in Kenya to what happened in Nigeria when the uh, during the answer hashtag answer protest in 2020? Okay, uh, Mazilayama. Mistake about what? Okay, let's see. He's coming back. Yeah. <clears throat> Make no mistake of what Essas represented. Essas was a demonstration for justice, for respect for human rights. But because Buhari was the president, the Northern has said is not worth identifying with. In fact, they went as far as saying it was an IPOB agenda. And today, based on that precedent, hunger is destroying them. Unemployment, companies are shutting down. People are being thrown on the street. Foreign investors packing massively as if something terrible, terrible is happening in Nigeria. Everybody is just, without notice, shutting down their investment. And running away. 
And the doctor has said, no, we have to protest, too. We have to protest. They had to expect this, a certain man to interpret it. So these are two different things. In Kenya, the people are informed. They know what they want. They pursued it and they got results. In Nigeria, those who are so backward and primitive, without understanding that when you build a wrong precedence, you will live to suffer it. They are struggling today to get a national consensus on the protest. And Southeast said they are not interested. Of course, because when Southeast was demanding that the police should be civil, the Yoruba land was also demanding. The South South was also demanding because the police brutality tend to be more in the South. The notaries were saying there was nothing like police brutality. The police was doing wonderful, wonderfully well. And today, it is their turn. So I have no issue with protest because it is a democratic thing to do. But for anybody to think what he condemned yesterday is suitable today, that person is wrong. That is why you must be careful with precedence you are building because definitely you must be strongly referenced. You know, in Nigeria, when you are trying to reference people or point, to pe point people towards the, the actions of their yesterday, they say you are being harsh. You are judging us harshly. But tell me, why you will not be judged harshly? Because if you don't relate with my yesterday, you cannot understand me today. And if you don't <clears> understand <throat> my today, invariably you will make a mistake in understanding me tomorrow. So that is all I have to say. Thank you. Uh, Mazi Layman, you have any contribution to make or do I go ahead with my questions? Uh, you can go ahead with the question. Okay, you uh, you have to bear with me because I still have another question for Marzi Austin. Marzi, you know this protest in Kenya initially was all about financial view, all about uh, looters, the corruption of the government officials, but as you can see from this week that the protest against financial bill and corruption has been gradually or snowballed into Ruto must go. And we had Ruto now came out saying that uh, he first of all uh, banned protests in Nairobi and went ahead to say that this protest is about being hijacked by the uh, by bandits that there are bandits who are coming to infiltrate this very protest so uh mazi chica austin i mean why do you think that suddenly just like uh buhari said during uh, hashtag answers protest that the protest has been infiltrated it has been hijacked do you think or uh, are you seeing this Kenya protest going the way the answers protests went to Nigeria by being inf infiltrated and being hijacked by the organized bandits? Okay, Mwada, if you expect me to, to give a strong position on that, perhaps you are now uh, seeing me as uh, an intelligent officer, you know, or one that was with the uh, uh, National Security of Advisor Office, or should I say, uh, a member of the M branch. Perhaps that is where you're seeing me, and I think uh, it's far from the reality because I'm not one of them. But uh, historically speaking, so I cannot really give a, a, a strong position whether it's going to snowball to that or not because it's purely a security matter. To discuss that and for somebody to discuss or make a strong prediction on that uh, that means that person should be speaking from the angle of having access to sensitive intelligence 
uh, intelligent uh, intelligence uh, reports or materials. But nevertheless, I, I think I will respond to that based on historical and from a historical perspective. From a historical perspective, I will respond to that. You know, one thing with the protest is this: you can know when it started, but you can't know how it's going to end or when it's going to end. That is what it is. That is what it is. Um, all over the world, uh, the January sixth that happened in Capito. You know, remember the the one that happened in Capito. People were asking for uh, election to be reviewed. Remember, along the line, um, somehow I'm talking about January sixth that happened in the U.S. You know, along the line, it was hijacked. And we know we knew people as a then that planted infiltrators in the midst in order to give that protest a black name. That is how governments operate all over the world. When there is a genuine cause, they try to infiltrate, they try to cause mayhem, they try to cause loss of lives and properties in order to have reason to use excessive force on the peaceful protesters. So if that happens in Nigeria, it, it, it's not a new thing. We have seen where sh the likes of Showere, the uh, Showere went for protest, uh, Deji, uh, the one that, you know, is uh, a barrister today. We have seen where they went to protest in Abuja. Before you know, miscreants were unleashed. That happened during Buhari's time. I remember December Buhari was an APC president. He was the president of APC Extraction. And you also have the same APC. So don't be surprised the same day of protest, you see Boko Haram, you will see bandits attacking and shooting innocent protesters. This is still APC. They know how to do it. Tunubu was in Lagos when peaceful answers protest was turned to a death zone. And in some quarters, it was alleged that Tunubu had hand in the you know, uh, death of innocent ancestors protesters. And Tunubu is the president today. Those who must commanded that act in Lagos are still actively in government. So, it is normal. It is normal to predict. One cannot be far from the truth if you say they are going to turn the whole thing into a bloodbath. But let me say this, because it's very, very important we say this. If such a thing happens, it might not really go down well like answers because of the mindset of the people of southern Nigeria and the northern Nigeria. If there is going to be killings of Northerners, remember Northern Nigeria is just a hashing bag for bandits. Dalma Jiris are just tools to be used if they so desire. So these are some of the things we must look into and understand the trajectory of the whole thing. That is all I have to say. Thank you so much. I would have loved us to continue because we have lots and lots of questions to ask and lots mm. of uh, things to analyze. But we can't just finish it today because we have other days ahead. I think uh, we will start rounding up here so that uh, on Sunday, we will come back on Sunday to continue from where we stop. Mazi, Lion Man, before Mazi Austin will come back to summarize his uh, submissions, can you summarize your submission so that we can start winding up? Okay, well, uh, God bless you and uh for what we have uh, uh, seen today or what we have said so far, 
and the 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 the, the, the level of the or uh, let me say the scenario we are right now in this struggle the only thing i urge dear friends is just to be sensitive and be sensible as well at the same time be focused and uh, i urge those who are coming on media to stop being childish on media this is time to play a matured man game because the stage we are we have crossed the rubicon and the, we have no back to go everybody should understand that we have no back to go what we have only to go is front and uh, i strongly believe i strongly believe that things is about to happen and uh, all i should be on this very present legal team representing Mazen and the Khan. We should fix our eyes on them. We should lay a secret investigation about them. We should be asking people questions concerning them and their activities because we wouldn't want that kind of... Remember what I posted? I said recently this syndrome of negotiation negotiation for release of Mazen and the canon it may be opposite they are telling you maybe this is the time when it is time to release Mazen and the can maybe they may even say it is time to kill him we should understand we should understand the game they are playing there is that this is time to kill you but they are weighing the strength of ipub they are weighing the intelligence of ipub so Sometimes when they come to media and see some of our people being misbehaving on media, they say, ah, these people, they are still naive on what we are about to do. But when they come and understand that these people, they are ahead of them, knowing where the game they are playing, knowing where this team is bleeding to. And you tell them where their bus stop is going to be. This will help them to restrain themselves again and so these people, they have caught us. So they know what we are doing. So this is not the time to speak anyhow. This is not the time to listen to gossip. And I urge Bia France to desist from listening to gossip. Freedom fighting is not about gossiping. We are not content creators. For those who want to create, like me, if I want to enjoy content, I know the pages to go. All those uh, our MCs in Nigeria, all those this. I go to their page, I laugh. But they wouldn't expect a freedom fighter to come on their page, you know, behaving the same way the content creators behave. This is, is childish to me. So I urge them to adjust. And uh, we shall see where we are or where we are heading to. Thank you. A very done submission. Mazi Chika Austin, can you give your friends and viewers all over the world your final submission? Well, there is no other submission I have than to tell us we have to encourage ourselves by ourselves. No one can do that for us. Either we encourage ourselves or we discourage ourselves. There's no two ways about it. The journey is not an easy journey. But talking about a positive end is achievable. That is all I have to say. Thank you so much, our great and wonderful analysts. Thank you, wonderful people of their friends. Thank you, all of us who has been standing with the leadership of IPOB and who has keep on keeping on and who has also continually believing in Maze Namdekano and in no way we would allow the agendists to achieve their agenda. Once again, we appreciate uh, Maze Lion Man, the Lioni, and all the members of IPOB in North America with their national uh, leader or national coordinator of North America by making our uh, IPOB families and IPOB members in 
North America to add to the number of IPOB by, succeed, by succeeding in registering and making IPOB a legal movement in North America. We thank you so much and we urge other members, if there is any other country that IPOB has not been registered because we know that we are across the globe. Let us also try to make sure that IPOB family is registered and recognized in such countries. Thank you, our wonderful viewers. Thanks to the leadership of IPOB. Despite all the far, uh, back and forth, they have been standing. They, they have raised their heads so high that uh, they can never be intimidated and they can never be, they can never dump this struggle and they can never forsake Maze Nandi Opokano as the leader of the indigenous people of Biafra. Thank you all uh, uh, media uh, frontiers who has been doing the needful and not those who have chosen to make themselves object of caricature. But I want to remind such individuals that the IPOB leadership has given an ultimatum that anybody in such or uh, with such licentious behavior should first of all desist from or take away IPOB, the word IPOB from your name and then go ahead and become whatever you want to become because you have your life to live, you have your choice to make. Nobody is compelling you, but stop making IPOB and IPOB leadership an object of caricature before the world and before the international communities. That is what I have to say this evening. And from here, I am saying to great listeners, good night.